A lot of people have asked me to react to the Game of the Year nominees from the Game Awards and just generally go through their nominees and talk about my take on each. Before we get into that, though, thank you so much for watching, and I got to hit that intro, but first hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when my content goes live. Thank you all so much for watching. So it is game of the year time, and let's talk about what Keeley has over on his website. So these are the games that got nominated, and they include A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, my initial reaction is it's really good to see something like Xenoblade Chronicles 3 on there. I love seeing uh, the Annapurna published Stray from Blue 12 Studio uh, on... <clears throat> that was the sort of stealth cat game that came out earlier this year. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok are really good. And I, I think really, if we're being honest, Plague Tale Requiem is great. But I think for a lot of people, it's going to come down to two games. It's going to come down to Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok. I definitely fall into that camp for these nominees. So on Keeley's website, for me, my game of the year currently is God of War Ragnarok. So that's who I voted for. <clears throat> and I think God of War Ragnarok is my favorite out of all of these games here. But I've only played a little bit of Plague Tale Requiem. I've only played a little bit of Elden Ring. Uh, I didn't play much Horizon Forbidden West. And I haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles 3 or Stray yet. So it's a bit of a difficult <laughs> uh, thing to vote on. So I'm just voting on the public-facing options that are available here. I'm not going to vote uh, in any sort of official capacity because I would only vote on games that I have played. And I have played God of War Ragnarok, and so far it is definitely my game of the year. But a very close runner-up, I'm not joking, is Marvel Snap. <laughs> I have been totally addicted to Marvel Snap. I'm really, really loving the card game, and I've been having a blast leveling up my cards and just playing the game every day to unlock my pool three cards as I have not spent a single cent in that game, but I have somehow managed to hit pool three by just, you know, doing all of my quests every day. And I love Marvel Snap. But when it comes down to it, uh, there, there was only one game that had a chance for me, and that was God of War Ragnarok. And I, I really, I enjoyed what I played of Elden Ring, but I, I have played a lot of those from soft games, like all of them, basically. And I felt, oh man, I'm gonna get treaded for this. I, I loved Elden Ring. I think it I think it will probably win game of the year for most people, but I like the combat in God of War Ragnarok better. And I'm playing through the whole game on Gimme God of War difficulty. I uh am in the final few chapters. I think I have four or five chapters left uh of the game. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying what I have played thus far. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the conclusion of the game once it rolls credits. For me, God of War Ragnarok, uh, it's fresh in a lot of people's mind, but I, I don't think you can underestimate what Elden Ring is. However, with the power of uh, retrospective, some of the criticisms, I think are going to rear their head for God of War Ragnarok. I think people are gonna talk about the puzzle design and how it's a little, frustrating when your companions are constantly telling you the solution to every single little puzzle or they're like hey there's a thing there maybe you should pick it up and you're like yeah dude i know i can see the story icon floating over <laughs> and uh that that gets a little bit much um i kind of like the fact that they're constantly talking to you because when you're in a combat situation sometimes having that additional audio cue about a status effect or something, well, it can get annoying when they tell you you're on fire for the 50th time, is very important because you can react to it. Like if you have a Bifrost buildup, you can figure out how you're going to address that issue. And I think that's something that you only kind of get when you're playing on those harder difficulties. You have to sort of puzzle solve within combat and you have to I won't I don't want to say master it because I don't think I'm particularly amazing at the game, but I'm having a good time working on my parry combos, working on the different ways that enemies react to status effects that you put on them and how to address each combat situation as it arises. 
Uh, other other games though on my list. So God of War and no joke, Marvel Snap were two of my favorite games for 2022. Uh, I also played through Gran Turismo 7 in for the entirety of the campaign. I really, really enjoyed it for a sim racer. It is a, a very, very strong showing from Sony. I think the, the one negative for it would be the fact that um, it had a lot of microtransaction issues and it seems like they say they corrected it, but then you go back a few days later and you realize they actually just end up doing the same thing that they already had apologized for. Uh, and then, yes, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I really have enjoyed the campaign. Uh, I have like two chapters left in the campaign. This is dad life, by the way. If you ever have kids, this is sort of how it goes. You get a few hours and the game, the next game I'm going to finish this year is God of War Ragnarok. And then I'll go back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And uh, yeah, I finished Gran Turismo 7. I was I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. Uh, shout out to Destiny 2 Witch Queen. I actually really liked that launch. But what happened with Destiny 2 Witch Queen was uh, I think they did really good on the Void season. Then the Solar season was whatever. And then I really do not like the current season filled with uh, Ark and the Telesto memes. It just I just sort of fell off uh, in terms of interest. So for the rest of the video, I wanted to go through Keeley's uh, list here and over on the Game Awards and put in my votes. I put in votes in a lot of these, so I'll bounce off and then... Uh, and then come back to it for best game direction. I think because so many people loved it, uh, even though it wasn't my personal favorite for best game direction, I would give it to Elden Ring or honestly Stray, because when you commit to a character like that, like a cat <laughs> and then go all in on designing the game around cat mechanics, I think it was really interesting, but I think because of how it, uh, pushed forward the FromSoft genre and seemed to have a wider interest than just uh, normal FromSoft fans. I, I think Elden Ring takes the cake in that category in the best game direction. Absolutely. Um, best narrative. So I'm not going to vote in all the categories, but the best narrative are A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and Immortality. For me, I need to play Immortality because I think a lot of people are going to sleep on that. I I honestly, I don't think it has a chance at winning, unfortunately, because I don't think enough people played it. But Immortality, I have heard a lot of good things. And even, even myself included, I have not had time to play it. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem, amazing game also. I got to sneeze, sorry. Uh, did I hold it? Okay. Nope. There it goes. Ah, ah sorry, everybody. No, no editing from the Ligari, from the Ligari master over here. Um, so I think Plague Tale Requiem has a chance. I think God of War Ragnarok has a chance. I didn't play Horizon Forbidden West enough to get a good taste of the narrative from Horizon Forbidden West. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on Im immortality. Right now, if I had to give it to one because I'm I'm furthest in God of War Ragnarok, I would give it to that. But honestly, there are moments in the storytelling where it gets a little... Uh, like they're setting things up for later on in the game and it gets a little like, OK, like I understand what you're doing and I would like to move on to the next next section. But uh, I, I am enjoying it quite a bit, but I, I would imagine Plague Tale has a chance here. I think God of War has a chance here and Immortality. Moving on to the next category. Oh, yeah. So hands down, best art direction goes to Scorn. Like no... Like all the other games did great. Elden Ring is great. God of War Ragnarok is great. But Scorn committed to that art style and just went for it. And for me, Scorn takes the cake. So best art direction is absolutely Scorn, hands down. I don't even think that you could... Uh, get, uh, well, you could make an argument for the other games, of course, because they're all nominated. But for me, it's Scorn. Easy. Uh, best score and music for outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song and or licensed soundtrack. I think Metal Health Singer because of how it marries the score to the gameplay. Uh, Metal Health Singer, it's on Game Pass. You can play it right now. Uh, absolutely phenomenal game. And you should definitely give it a shot. 
Best audio design, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Gran Turismo, and Horizon Forbidden West. For me, this one was easy. Uh, man, that bell on those perfect parries, the music, the score for the game, the sound design of every aspect of the game. I, I think God of War Ragnarok is a very, very strong candidate in that particular category, and uh, that's why it gets my vote. For best performance awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture, you have Ashley Birch from Horizon Forbidden West. You have a Plague Tale Requiem, Charlotte McBurney. You have God of War Ragnarok's Christopher Judge, Immortality's Man Engaged, Still Need to Play Immortality, and God of War Ragnarok's Sunny Suljic. For me, this came down to two candidates. This came down to the God of War Ragnarok's uh, Christopher Judge and a Plague Tale Requiem's Charlotte McBurney, a uh, really, really tough choice here because it comes down to Plague Tale. And I really adore Amicia and Hugo and the journey that they've been on. But I got to give it to Christopher Judge. I think there's a challenge in doing voice work for a character like Kratos. Like we joke about boy and all that silly stuff. But in this game, he has a lot of range as a character and he he evokes a lot of emotion using very few words. And I think that's really hard for a voice actor to do. So that's why he gets my vote. Games for Impact. I haven't played most of these. I did play As Does Falls and finished it this year. But um, it didn't give me a thought-provoking message or pro-social meaning or message. I, I just don't feel like uh, that one jumped out for me. And I haven't even heard of a lot of these other ones. So I'm not going to vote in that category but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. All right, best ongoing. I, I'm actually deselecting what I voted before I come back to it so that we can talk about it together. We have Apex Legends. They've been doing you know regular hero updates and then adding to that, we have Destiny 2, one of those games that I've been playing for years, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Now, a lot of people might think that I would vote for Destiny 2 in this category. While the storytelling has been very strong, I am getting very fatigued by the model of go do stuff and fill out your little square chart every every season, unlock the new guns, unlock the new armor. It's very repetitive and very dull, if I'm being totally honest. And I'm I'm really, really feeling fatigue on the Destiny franchise. I know I'm in the minority there, but like I, I'm leaning more towards games that utilize a little bit of my time because when I when I play a game like Destiny, I want to like go all in on it and play it a ton or like God of War Ragnarok. I like to set aside four or five hours to play in a big stretch because that's how I like to play those games. And uh, Destiny 2, they've just fell into this really formulaic uh, pattern that uh, isn't gelling for me. So yet again, Final Fantasy 14 gets my vote. I think Final Fantasy 14 is one of the best ongoing franchises, uh, best ongoing series. Uh, and I would love to see it continue. Now, I haven't played Cult of the Lamb or Neon White yet, so I need to play those two before I'm able to vote in this category, but I think this is a very strong showing. We have Sifu, we have Stray, we have Tunic. I think Tunic is great in terms of art direction made by a very small team. I love what they did with Stray. Sifu gets a lot of praise, but I haven't played enough of these games, so I don't even have a vote in this system or here because I haven't played the first four. I still haven't played Stray, Sifu, Neon White, or Cult of the Lamb, so I'm just not going to vote here, and I'll revisit it at a later time. But I think a good showing, I've heard good things about Cult of the Lamb, I've heard good things about Neon White, and I want to play Sifu. Uh, I already told you one of these games are my game of the year. Diablo Immortal was incredibly predatory. I'd be kind of upset if it won, actually. Best mobile game is Marvel Snap. It is really, really good. Highly recommended from me. I definitely recommend you play Marvel Snap if you get the opportunity to. And uh, just do it. Best community support. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Hands down, Bungie. Now, I know I just said a lot of stuff about how uh, Destiny is in its current state, but their community management team is just phenomenal. And um, I, I think they've done a really, really good job with um, uh, supporting their community in, in a positive way and being very transparent about what they're working on. They're constantly on social media, constantly talking to their fans. 
Innovation and inaccessibility. I don't really understand why Return to Monkey Island or As Dust Falls is on there. Like there's stuff there, The Quarry, sure, Last of Us Part One. But uh, yeah, God of War Ragnarok has a lot of really great accessibility tools. And when you compare it to what they had in the previous game, it is a it is a substantial leap. Uh, best VR AR games include After the Fall, Among Us VR, Bone Lab, Moss Book 2, Red Matter. Not going to vote in this category because I don't play VR games, but let me know which one you think is the best in the comments below. Best action game, the best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat. I need to play Neon White and I need to play Sifu because right now for me, it comes down to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. Great beat em up, Ninja Turtle Shredder Revenge, but is it better than Sifu? I've heard amazing things from Sifu from people who I trust, like Mitchell Saltzman, who play a ton of it, and I need to play these two. I, I have no interest in Bayonetta, but uh, if I can get a code from work or something where I can play it, uh, then, I then I would consider that one because I've also heard good things about the combat. But uh, if I've at least played four, I feel like I could cast a vote here. Um best action adventure so we have plague tale requiem god of war ragnarok horizon forbidden west stray and tunic and for me god of war ragnarok i think i made it very clear it is my game of the year currently it's dead serious it is down to god of war ragnarok and marvel snap for me and right now it's still god of war ragnarok and don't don't like turn your nose up about marvel snap because it's a mobile card game i think those games get dismissed a lot you can do a mobile card game very badly and this is one of the best versions of it that's not predatory it you can play the whole thing for free like i have been playing and uh it reminds me of a game i used to play in high school so i i am very happy with how that is going along so far best role-playing game so haven't played the four on the right but i i mean elden ring <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what Pokemon Legends Arceus has done, Triangle Strategy, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I've seen enough gameplay of those to know they are nowhere near as good as Elden Ring is. Um, yeah, game design with rich player characterization, customization, progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Elden Ring, hands down. It's a unique experience. Uh, it wins. Uh, best fighting game. Jeez. I, I'm not going to play most of these, so I'm not going to vote in that category. Uh, best family game, I voted for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Um, I think like there's other games in here that have a chance to do well, but uh, I, I think this one is great just in terms of value of what you get and the sheer amount of games in it. It's a fun game to play with the fam. Best Sim and Strategy, haven't played enough of these, but the, the nominations were Dune, Mario Rabbids, Total War Warhammer 3, Two Point Campus, and Victoria 3. And then we get into like, uh, oh, best sports or racing game, Gran Turismo 7, uh, definitely gets my vote. I don't care about FIFA. I would never vote for any of these. So like, I don't I don't care. <laughs> uh, Ali Ali World, maybe, but yeah. For sports racing, Gran Turismo 7 definitely takes it this year. Best multiplayer. Sorry, I'm I'm revealing my votes. Um, great stuff. I've heard good things. Overwatch 2 is doing really, really good. I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has done a phenomenal job this, this time around. And uh, I'm very, very happy about how it's done. Uh, how, what it's done with multiplayer, sorry. Content Creator of the Year, we have Carl Jacobs, Ludwig, Nobelian, Noboru, and QT Cinderella. I don't know any of these people, but I know Nobelian. He uh, is great, or he was great when he was on social media. And uh, it's unfortunate that he left, but I'm, he definitely gets my vote this time. Best Debut Indie, we have Neon White, Norco. I need to play Norco now. Uh, Stray, Tunic, and Vampire Survivors. I haven't played enough of the games in this category, so I need to play more, and I will come back to it. Best Adaptation. This one was tough. I ruined this surprise again. We have Arcane Le League of Legends, Cyberpunk, Edge Runners, The Cuphead Show, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and Uncharted. I stopped watching Uncharted in the middle of it on Netflix. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, good. Uh, I'm sure this is a great animated adaptation, but Cyberpunk Edge Runners is... Uh, phenomenal and definitely gets my vote. Most anticipated game. Oh, I gotta, I gotta like bounce out so I don't ruin it for you guys. My most anticipated game is Final Fantasy 16. It came down to Starfield and Final Fantasy 16. That is the tough decision, right? But for me, 
I, I give the edge to Final Fantasy 16 for sure. That's the one I'm most excited for. I'm curious about how they're going to change the game and make and improve it. And then we get a bunch of esports games, and I'm not into esports, so I didn't vote for best esports game or athlete or team or coach or event. I mean, Evo will always get my vote, but I I, I don't know what these other events are. And uh, that's how I voted for Game of the Year categories on the website. So not in any sort of official capacity, but yeah. And I told you what my Game of the Year was. My personal Game of the Year this year is God of War Ragnarok. Last year, I think I gave it to Halo Infinite over, what was it? It came down to Halo Infinite and uh, Returnal. In hindsight, ah, that's still one I would struggle with because I still play Halo today. Uh, Returnal is phenomenal, but uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when it goes live. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you would like to become a member, memberships are turned on, and you can support the channel. Thank you so much to everybody on this list. It is great to see you all continuing to support me, and I really appreciate it. You can click that Join button if you want to support this channel. And I have a video for you. We can check out my Game of the Year for 2021 and whatever I rambled about there, so check that out. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.